the majority of the streams from a lot of these so-called big artists, they're fake. The major labels are running these streaming farms, they're running these streaming numbers, they're running these setups. All right, we in a major, major industry and that industry is ran by a machine. This sh the matrix. The numbers are simply bogus and the incentive for the industry, the record labels, to continue doing this is simply too high. They're literally stealing money from other people. The idea is for those eyes to see what appears to be the success they're getting and a percentage of those eyes then convert into actual listeners. They also, and you guys all know, Anyone in the industry watching this, you know this guy and that company, I won't say the names, but they boost the streams and they boost the sales. People are falling for the illusion, thinking that the numbers are actually authentic. So why wouldn't they continue? It's so sad that music has come to this. When are people gonna wake up to the lies? And that's why fake streams is not only a sickness, but it's an epidemic in this generation. Fake streams in the music industry are rampant right now. And some of the biggest artists in the music industry are actually partaking in this scam. A scam that's meant to keep the public in the dark about these inflated numbers. Not only are some of the biggest artists partaking in it, but the labels, i.e. the people who own the music, and certain companies I'm about to tell you about are the masterminds behind this deception. Up to 10% of all music streams are considered to be fake. That 10% is the product of so-called streaming farms, which I'm sure you've heard about. Everything you're seeing in the music industry right now is completely fake. Believe none of it. This is one of the best times to be an artist, but it's also the worst for some of the reasons that I'm gonna share right now. Not only is this a topic that concerns every single musician out there, but it should also be of concern to you i.e. the consumer. Almost a year ago, I released a video on how rappers are faking their streams. A video I made after this guy, Russ, decided to uncover what was happening behind closed doors. Russ, a 30-year-old rapper, singer, songwriter, producer, and engineer out of Atlanta, Georgia, who on paper is one of the most successful independent musicians in the rap game, went on a tirade against Billboard, the biggest conglomerate in the music industry, accusing them of removing his real album sales. The reason for why they did that, that is unknown. However, Russ was merely using this opportunity to uncover a bigger truth, the epidemic of fake streams in the music industry which is completely unknown to the general public. Good audio quality. This is a one-sided disc on the other side. It's simply the label of the record, and the record player which plays it is also surprisingly small and compact. That information is read by a laser from the underside. You simply place the disc in there like a conventional record player, and off you go. The traditional physical copy of an album is sadly dying as the world has become so digitally dominated and there's practically no real need to buy a physical copy anymore. Aside from if you're one of the rare music enthusiasts who likes to collect vinyls or CDs in general, the business of music has adapted to this digital shift. Not only is it easier to promote your music digitally, it's also the smart thing to do financially, especially for the average musician who has a dream of making it in the business one day. The music industry has evolved with the times and the only thing that sadly matters now is an artist's streams. With this shift taking place, there are a lot of negatives that have came with it. The biggest one being the monopoly it's created. Something a lot of artists are seeing the negatives of, especially the independent ones. There's only one company that's in control of the numbers that verifies the billboard placements, and that is Billboard themselves. They own some of the biggest publications in the business on top of the only analytics provider for the entire music industry. This is what the public is basing an artist's worth on now, numbers that are controlled by a single entity. In that video I made a year ago, I spoke about these so-called smokescreen companies. A lot of them work with some of the biggest labels in the music industry, and they supposedly specialize as marketing agencies for musicians. On the surface, it looks like they provide organic marketing services to artists, but on the back end, all that they're doing is receiving money by faking the artist's streams. The question you probably have is, how in the world is this even going on? I mean, is it even legal? First of all, it's actually not legal, and a lot of these people will eventually get caught, just like the person I'm about to tell you about in a second. Make sure you stick around till the end. The reason for why this is even a thing? Well, let's just say that the entire music industry has not only greenlit these services, 
but they are aiding these companies in the process. Now, the second question you have is, why is that? Well, let me ask you this. How is the majority of the wealth in the world acquired? Is it through honesty, integrity, morals, and principles? Or is it through greed, corruption, and dishonesty? The incentive for the music industry to enable this immoral practice is fueled by, you guessed it, money. Music is not what it once used to be, and that's the sad truth. Although the shady side of the business has always been present, things have gotten way worse now, especially considering the advancement of technology, something the biggest corporations who own the music are fully taken advantage of. Now this will eventually have dire consequences, just like it did for a 53-year-old man from Denmark. In 2018, the Danish Rights Alliance, a conglomerate that was formed to fight for fair conditions for the creative industries on the internet, Notice that somebody was generating and getting paid royalties through music streaming on a scale only achieved by major international superstars. After noticing this, they eventually reported this to the authorities, and the findings were horrifying. The volume of the artificially generated streams led to this unknown man becoming Denmark's 46th highest earning composer for streaming between 2014 and 2017. Numbers that were a little too good to be true considering the fact that he was completely nameless. This unknown man was somehow generating more royalties than some of the biggest musicians in the country. It turns out that this 53 year old Danish man was a mastermind behind a streaming fraud scheme. One that allowed him to generate over 4.3 million Danish crones which equals to over $650,000. The man profited from streams of 689 pieces of music across multiple distributors like Spotify and Apple Music. He also breached copyright on 37 of the tracks by editing versions of other musicians' work, changing their length, tempo, and publishing them under his own name. This all happened between the years of 2013 and 2016. After years of thorough investigation by the Danish authorities, the 53-year-old man from the Esterlen metropolitan area was sentenced on March 31st this year to one year and six months in prison. The charges included data fraud of a particular series, nature, and copyright infringement after having conducted stream manipulation of hundreds and thousands of dollars. The case was described as a cynical theft of revenue that should have gone to real artists and songwriters. And this is why you should never ever decide whether or not you're going to listen to an artist strictly based off of streams. There's a high probability they could be fake, and as a matter of fact, a lot of them are fraudulent. The same goes for these so-called social media agencies that help influencers market themselves and build a platform. It turns out that it's nothing but a ploy that involves buying fake followers. There's so much incentive in deceiving the average consumer when it comes to marketing in general. But when it comes to the music industry, the goal is for the deceit to bypass the distributing platforms so the fraudster could then get paid. Money that should have otherwise gone to the honest and hardworking musicians that have built a real community around their name no matter how big or small it is. The real question still stands. Why would anyone go out of their way to inflate their numbers knowing damn well those people are not even real? Well, this is when we get into psychology. The average consumer sees numbers attached to a product and they assume those numbers are not only authentic, but that they hold more value than the rest. This is connected to the social phenomenon a lot of us know as social proof. Human beings often make choices about what to think and what to do based on the thoughts and actions of other people. To put it simply, we love following the herd. Social proof is a term that was coined in 1984 by Robert Cialdini. In his book titled Influence, Robert explains how when people are uncertain, they look towards the actions of other people's behavior to determine their own. Psychologically, there's something comforting about following the footsteps of others. It makes you feel like you're doing the right thing. And the music industry is using social proof to gain the trust of the average consumer by utilizing these fake streams. When people see that others are enjoying something, they'll at the very least give it a chance, which is the entire point of these bogus numbers. It makes the artists appear bigger than they actually are. So essentially what they're selling is an illusion and not records. One that comes with grave consequences. Inflated streams gives a false impression of an artist's popularity, which in return leads to an imbalance of people who don't deserve certain opportunities getting those opportunities. While the generally talented musician is spending their time creating with integrity, an entire system of fraudulent numbers are propped up by the music industry with the help of this mirage. It's a very unethical and deceptive market perception that doesn't do any good for the betterment of the art. The fan-driven musician is just not making as much noise as the industry pushed ones mainly because the latter has an entire machine promoting their brand by plastering their face all over the place. It's also scary but not so surprising how a lot of these record labels are the ones not only partaking in the scam, but they're the ones funding it. 
because think about it the better their artist looks to the public is the more money they make they have a clear vested interest in seeing them succeed now what if this artist isn't succeeding well there's two different options. The investment they made into this artist goes to waste. This is how a lot of musicians' careers end up dying, sadly. And then the second option is, what if we change the optics by helping them look better than they actually are. You do that by manipulating the lens in which the public is viewing them from. Suddenly you have an artist the market considered a has-been being praised by the public once again. All because the numbers attached to their name is now of significance. This is when the corporations make another push for their relevancy and a whole lot of money gets dumped into the career of this artist. After all, they now have the numbers to back up the fake hype they've generated for them. Some of the biggest artists in the music industry have benefited from this. Another aspect of this epidemic is fake YouTube views. According to YouTube's engagement policy, the platform doesn't allow anything that artificially increases the number of views, likes, or comments, which is a little confusing because fake views have been a part of the YouTube platform for a while. In connection with the music industry, in 2013, Billboard started counting all official audio streams on YouTube towards the Hot 100 placements. Five years later, in 2019, both visuals and audio data from YouTube started to count. And that was the beginning of the corporations having an incentive to manipulate the engagement so their artists could eventually make it on the billboard charts. Back in 2022, Atlantic Records, one of the biggest labels in the music industry, got accused of buying fake views from multiple other rappers on their roster. The rappers included Lil Uzi Vert, Roddy Rich, Don Tolliver, and A Boogie. Houston rapper and singer Don Tolliver dropped a music video for the song Do It Right, and within a couple hours of the video being up, it had already amassed almost 8 million views and over 89,000 likes, on top of thousands and thousands of bot comments. Even artists who seemingly don't have to do it are in on the scam. The question is, how do you spot these inflated numbers? The truth is, aside from using a little bit of common sense, it's near impossible, unless the engagement is heavily imbalanced, which only seems to be the case when amateurs purchase fake streams and bots to prop themselves up. 90% of the time, since it's done with so much delicacy and consideration for how it's gonna appear to the public, the naked eye isn't able to spot manufactured streams. My philosophy regarding this might be a little extreme, but unless there's real life proof that an artist is packing out a venue of real people and they're able to sell hard tickets on tour consistently over time, I personally don't buy into any of the numbers that I see. And that might sound a little extreme, but think about it. We just don't know what's real anymore. Everything in the industry is fake and there's so much incentive for things to be fake. And that's the biggest issue here. The music industry is not about creating art. The industry is about business. How can we take this thing that's not so big and make it seem bigger than it really is? That's the whole game because developing it for years on end is not the path we're gonna take. Since that will require time, it'll require effort, and most importantly of all, money that could have otherwise been spent on marketing, i.e. in this case, fake streams. The saddest part is this is only going to get worse. The honest and hardworking musicians in the industry, they're all becoming extinct. And they're literally having their entire livelihoods ripped away from them from vultures who only care about making money. They don't care about creating impact with their art. They're here to make money. Especially now with AI, which is an entire topic of its own. The industry is moving towards separating the art form of making music from real people as much as they possibly can. As long as they can keep on pulling in that dough, regardless of how unethical it may be, it's gonna continue. And until there's a major overhaul and the industry surgically tackles this issue with precision, intended to fill the gaps of manipulation that's currently taking place, absolutely nothing is gonna change. And the biggest reason for why I don't think this industry revamp, if you will, is gonna happen, like we spoke on earlier, they're all in on it. So this is an issue distributors like Spotify is gonna have to handle. But then again, how likely is it for that to happen? Because if you don't know, if you're not in on a little secret, which is it's not a secret, it's public information, the major labels and the distributors are all in bed with each other. In 2021, it was revealed that Universal Music Group, the biggest music company in the entire world, owned a 3.3% stake in Spotify and a lot of the other major labels have stakes as well. So this is an issue of an entire system that's created to manipulate the consumer. Because if you can convince the average listener to buy into the perception that's being sold, well, that benefits the entire infrastructure with more money. And that's the goal. All I'm gonna say is don't believe the numbers because they're far from authentic.
Anyway, the fake streams epidemic, if you made it this far, do yourself a favor and subscribe. And also like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Any thoughts on this topic? Because, you know, this is something that affects all of us. Artists, casual listeners, and everyone in between. Anyway, I'll catch you in the comment section below. But most importantly of all, I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.